Right, we're going to have a look at differentiating um, square roots. So questions like this, if f of x is equal to the square root of x, we have to find f dash of x. So we've got to differentiate this square root. But before we do that, I just want to have a look at square roots and let's have a look. Okay, square root of x. Another way to write the square root of x is, is I'm not differentiating here, I'm just writing it in a different way. So it's another it's a different notation for the square root of x. So the square root of x is the same as x to the power of a half. Okay, so that's that's important. We're going to have to use that when we're differentiating. If I have, say, the cube root of x. So the cube root of x, another way to write that would be x to the power of one third. If I had the fourth root of x, so I write the fourth root of x uh, like this. So the fourth root of x, okay, you should see a pattern now. When it's the cube root of x, I have x to the power of a third. When it's the square root of x, I have x to the power of a half. And you know, when we write the square root of x, we never bother to put the two in here, the way we put the three in here or the four in here for the fourth root. But it is there, we just don't, we use the square root so often that we don't bother, but really the square root of x should be written like that. So the fourth root of x is the same as x to the power of one quarter. And the fifth root of x would be the same as x to the power of one fifth, etc. So, okay, we're gonna we're gonna use that now when we're differentiating the square root. So let's go back to the question that we had originally. So, if f of x is equal to the square root of x, find f dash of x. Let's write down the rules that we have first of all for differentiating. We don't have to do this by first principles. The question isn't asking us to, so we can just use the rules. So, here we have our f of x and f dash of x, and we know that when we differentiate x to the power of n, we get n x to the power of n minus 1. If we differentiate a x to the power of n, we get n times a x to the power of n minus 1. And if we differentiate a constant, say c, we get 0. Okay, so when we go to differentiate the square root of x, if you look, we, ha we haven't got a rule that allows us to do that. There's, the square root of x doesn't look like this, it doesn't look like this, or it, it's not a constant. So we're not going to be able to use one of those rules. But if we remember, another way to write the square root of x, so instead of writing f of x is equal to the square root of x, I could rewrite that as f of x is equal to x to the power of a half. Well, now I can use one of these rules because x to the power of a half is the same as this rule here, the x to the power of n rule, where n is equal to a half. So this now is easy to differentiate. You can differentiate f dash of x is equal to, and just follow this rule, n is a half, so it's going to be a half multiplied by x to the power of a half minus 1. So we, get, we end up with that. Okay, it looks it looks quite awkward, but it's not really. Let's simplify it. So we have a half, x to the power of a half minus one. Well, a half minus one is minus a half, so x to the power of minus one over two. Now, this is the answer. When f of x is the square root of x, when I differentiate, I get this. We can, we can tidy that up because okay, if you look at that x to the power of minus a half, it's not quite obvious what that means. We know, if you remember, we do, do, let me go to another page. I'm going to go back to my square root page. Okay. So if you remember when we had when we did this, we had x to the power of minus n. Another way to write x to the power of minus n is one over x to the power of n. And I can work backwards there. If I have one over x to the power of n, that's the same as x to the power of minus n. So it doesn't matter what the value of n is. So let's say I have x to the power of minus three that's the same as one over x to the power of three. Rather than have minus three there, let's say I have minus a half. So I say I have x to the power of minus a half. Well, that's just going to be one over x to the power of a half. And x to the power of a half, well, we know from up here, means the square root of x. So one over x to the power of a half is the same as one over the square root of x. So just to tidy up this question that we were doing, we started off with f of x is equal to the square root of x and we wanted to find f dash of x, we changed the square root of x to be x to the power of a half, and then we differentiated to find f dash of x. And when we differentiated, we got f dash of x is equal to a half x to the power of minus a half. But now we know that x to the power of minus a half is the same as, well, we got a half, x to the power of minus a half would be the same as times one over, I'm just gonna put that in brackets because we're multiplying by a half, one over, x to the power of a half. And x to the power of a half is the square root of x, so I can tidy that up a little bit more. I could rewrite that as one over two multiplied by one over the square root 
of x. And then I can multiply that out, I guess. We've got two fractions here, so top by top, one by one is one, all over two by root x is twice the square root of x. So when we differentiated, differentiated the square root of x, we ended up with this. And this is the answer, but I just tidied it up a little bit to make it, to turn it into something that's maybe a little bit more understandable. So a half x to the power of minus a half is the same as one over twice root x. Let's have a look at one more example. So say we have, question says, find dy over dx if y is equal to, and here we've got the cube root of x plus 5x squared. So we've got an, an extra bit in here, but this part is easy to differentiate. Remember, we've got a sum, and if we have a sum, we can differentiate each part individually. Okay, let's write down the rules again. So we've got the f of x column, and when we differentiate f of x, we get f dash of x. So when we differentiate x to the power of n, we get n x to the power of n minus 1. Differentiate a x to the power of n, we guess n a x to the power of n minus 1. And when we differentiate a constant, we get 0. So by this stage, you should be, you should be remembering these rules. Okay, so we have to differentiate this. There is, no, there is no rule over here to differentiate a cube root. But we can just write, we know now that the cube root of x we can write that as x to the power of one third. So now that's easy to differentiate because that's the same as the x to the power of n rule. So we have x to the power of a third plus five x squared. Now we haven't differentiated yet. All we've done is rewritten the cube root of x as x to the power of one third. Now we can differentiate and I can find dy over dx. So dy over dx is, just following this rule, in n is one third. So I rewrite that as one third x to the power of one third minus one plus differentiate five x squared. It's this rule here, so it's two by five. So two by five x to the power of two minus one. I can tidy that up a little bit. So I get one third x to the power of, now I've got a third minus one. So one third minus one would be the same as minus two thirds. Plus two by five is 10, x to the power of two minus one is one. So it's just 10 x. Okay, so we can, we can that's, this is the answer, but we can tidy this up a little bit to make it a little bit more understandable. So we've got one third x to the power of minus two thirds. Let's have a look at what, what exactly that means. So I'm going to come back to this page. Uh, I just want to have a look at what x to the power of minus two thirds means. So say we have, okay, we've got x to the power of minus two thirds. Okay, well, by the rule of in, rules of indices, if you remember uh, this rule, Okay, forget about that for the moment. Let's have a look at this rule of indices. If we have, say, a to the power of b, so we've got some number to the power of b, all to the power of c. So a to the power of b raised to the power of c. That's the same as a to the power of bc. We just multiply the b and the c. So for example, if we've got 2 to the power of 3, all to the power of 4, that would be the same as 2 to the power of three times four, which is 12. Okay, why am I, why am I doing that? Well, this here, I can, I can go backwards. That's the reason why. So two to the power of 12, I could split 12 into three times four, or I could split BC into B times C. So I could split minus two thirds into X to the power of one third, like that, all to the power of, mm, well, let's say, minus one third all to the power of two because twice minus one third is the same as minus two thirds. So when I do that, this becomes a little bit easier to simplify because now we know, okay, any, when we, we've, we've had this plenty of times now, x to the power of minus n is the same as one over x to the power of n. So x to the power of minus one third is the same as one over x to the power of, oops, it's the same as one over x to the power of one third. So this part, the part that's in brackets, is the same as this here. It's still all to the power of two, so I still have that there. Okay, so, and what what could we do now? Well, x to the power of a third is the cube root. So if I want, you don't have to do this, I could rewrite that as one over the cube root of x all squared. So if we go back to what we ended up with, Okay, we, we have this here, x to the power of minus two thirds. Another way to write that is one over the cube root of x all to be squared. So if we go back to the question we had, and you don't have to do this. I mean, this is the answer and we can leave our answer like this. 
we could rewrite that if we want as, uh, what do we get again? We have x to the power of minus two thirds is the same as one over the cube root of x squared. So we could rewrite this as one third times an x to the power of uh, minus two thirds we know is this thing here, one over the cube root of x squared. So one over the cube root of x all to be squared plus 10x. So if we want, I mean, does that look a little bit nicer than that? Uh, possibly, possibly not. It depends. It depends on if you, some people would prefer this, some people would prefer this. So you can, you can decide if you want to leave it like this or leave it like this. But the important thing, the most important thing from all of this is probably this page. The square root of x, another way to write it, is x to the power of a half. The cube root of x is x to the power of a third. The fourth root of x is x to the power of a quarter. So if we're asked to differentiate, if we're asked to differentiate, say f of x, just do this, we've done it already, f of x is equal to the square root of x. If we're asked to differentiate that, the, before you differentiate it, rewrite it as f of x is equal to x to the power of a half. Now differentiate. I get f dash of x, I can just use the, the rule, the x to the power of n rule, I just get a half x to the power of one half minus one, which is a half x to the power of minus half. And that's the answer.